Cardiff has changed considerably over time. Much of the city centre is now nearly unrecognisable from its former self. However, there is a place that's defied the relentless development and, against all odds, still stands after nearly 100 years. Jacobs is sort of a, it's a place where people come to escape from reality, I think. It's quite sad, really, that a lot of people don't know where Jacobs is at the moment, and it's kind of become a bit lost with all the, the new buildings that have come around us. This space is almost like a middle finger to the corporate interests in the area and capitalism. The one thing Cardiff is lacking is colour. It is expanding very well, but it's getting very bland. And Jacobs adds that colour to the city. I'm Ian Cooling. Uh, I manage Jacobs Antique Centre here in Cardiff, and I've done for a number of years. The original uh, building was uh, built in the uh, 1920s as a wholesale hardware warehouse. It expanded a couple of extra floors were added onto it, um, and it incorporated an adjacent listed Georgian house in the 1950s. Soon after that, as you got into the 60s, 70s, um, that sort of operation became redundant with uh, the DIYs coming in and the out-of-town warehouses. Uh, and it closed down in about 1970, 72, something like that. Uh, and was empty for a number of years before being converted to an antiques warehouse in 1982. Now in his 90s, retired school teacher Edwin Sutton has been trading in Jacobs since the very beginning, back in 1982. I sell what I consider to be like um, curios, curiosities, and various things. There's no specific line. I come here three days a week and it keeps my mind active. I meet people and the people who come here sort of like to buy or peruse, uh, they, they come regularly. They come well, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so they come here and uh, there's all sorts of interesting things here, you know, to look at and to buy. Just to, people, some people don't buy anything, they'll just kind of have a chat and I like that. It's kind of a therapy for me, it keeps my mind active. Well, I do love it here actually, it's a bit of an oasis sort of in Cardiff where you can come in and you can touch ancient things, old things and uh, some museum pieces sort of and uh, there's a, something for everyone I think within Jacobs. There's typically about 30 different dealers in the building. They deal in all manner of things. So you can have your antiques, your, your typical china and your antique furniture, but we also do a lot of retro vintage stuff. And there's a large number of specialist collectors, you know, coins and military, even taxidermy, which has come rapidly into fashion recently. My name is Joe Glass, and my wife's name is Jane Bugler. The name of the business is Angel Ali, and we do mainly uh, interior antiques and loads of taxidermy as well. I first came into the business uh, as a collector. I was collecting for years and years, and then we came to visit Jacobs, and we seen this room, and we liked the room, and that's how we start renting this room and start selling a bit of our collection, you know, and it grew from there. The 
there's a number of dealers who've been in here almost since the start, you know, 20, 30 years. They're very knowledgeable, they're very helpful, and it really makes people welcome and feel at home. You can come in thinking, oh, I don't like antiques, but you'll find something in here which you will like. And a great example of the breadth of variety here is the long-established and much-loved Cardiff Comics. I first arrived in Jacobs in 1981. It was an unusual place at the time because it was such a diverse collection of stalls. I suppose the customer base falls into two parts. There's those that want nostalgia for what they read as a child. There's others, though, who just appreciate the modern artists, the modern writers. And these days, the graphic novel form is taken seriously as literature. And whilst the numerous dealers in their stalls are undoubtedly the lifeblood of Jacobs, one of his biggest draws is the third floor, containing a cafe and the West Wharf Art Gallery. My business is about showing, displaying art from Welsh artists. I first got into the business because I was here selling paintings. I suggested to the owner that we can't put antiques here. This would be an ideal place to show large pieces of work from modern artists. As I had done a project on contemporary work, I was in touch with a lot of local artists and was able to communicate with them what we were trying to do, contact them to show their work, select what I wanted to do, and we displayed them. In terms of the gallery is sort of a hub for creativity, we have quite well-renowned names like you know, Richard Cox, David Gould, um, but we also welcome work from students. So yeah, really, we, um, we hold exhibitions for local Welsh artists, established ones, um, and we're just really encouraging creativity in Wales. My involvement at Jacobs Market is in the form of a graduate exhibition for documentary photography at the University of South Wales. We have finished our course, finished third year, and this is kind of the final showing of our year's work and our final projects all in this space at Jacobs. Additionally to all the antiques, we've recently been doing a lot more different and exciting things um, to attract new people and different audiences to Jacobs. Most recently we've done um, theatres in different spaces. Um, one was with the Little Bird Theatre Company, that was only um, a few days ago. That was really successful and had a, a sellout show. We've also done videos um, for uh, bands, local bands in Cardiff using just the different spaces. Jacobs is such a big building and um, a lot of the spaces can go unnoticed. We've done a, a Cardiff's only rooftop cinema um, with Motley Movies, which was really, really something special and a great addition to Cardiff's cultural scene, really. Um, Motley Movies is a pop-up cinema. We put a cinema in places where you would normally kind of find cinemas. So obviously a rooftop, uh, basement, uh, waterfront, uh, or, you know, train station and sort of that. I don't think the attraction of Motley Movies is, is the films. I think it's more, you know, it's, it's doing something outdoors. You know, it's one of those things, you know, you can go to any cinema uh, and watch, you know, a, a new film, but you can't do it underneath the stars, you know, with a cocktail or, or street food. And its location in the very heart of the city is undoubtedly a key factor in Jacob's appeal. However, the redevelopment of the immediate area in the 1990s desperately wanted to claim the scalp of this historic building, along with those of its neighbours. There was uh, a number of years back immense pressure to relocate us. I mean, we're the only building which has been retained within the area. We fought a big uh, battle at a public inquiry to keep the building. And so the building was saved. But what of the heritage and preservation of a place like Jacobs? Uh, I think the continued existence and longevity of the building in Cardiff is very important. It's really part of history. And I think the inside actually reflects the outside. Because um, 
You kind of look at it as sort of a documentation of times gone by. Uh, I think I think it's very important to kind of preserve buildings like this, especially when you know all around it's there's all kind of new buildings. There's a certain amount of heritage of what you know this area used to be coming down from the docks or anything. You know, I think buildings like this, you know, and, and over there, you know, they, they need to kind of stay here, really, to kind of keep its personality. Well, if you have a look around through Cardiff and, and many other cities now, uh, a lot of these new builds pop up and they're very sterile and very generic. Um, I, I like old buildings, I like old things. They've got character, they've got stories to tell. I think it is important that it does remain, uh, you know, in Cardiff and it, you know, remains open, really, and, and that people support it, I guess. And this cuts to the heart of the issue. Jacobs is first and foremost a business. In order to thrive, the events need patrons and its stalls need regular customers. So what are the future? Jacobs has always been a, a big part of my life. Even as a young child, I can remember coming here and seeing the antiques and seeing the different spaces and the different things that went on here. My main ambition for Jacobs is obviously to see it here for decades to come. In the short term future, I think it's key to make sure things like the rooftop cinema are all successful and attract new people. And then hopefully in the long term, I'd love to see you know, the place open a lot more than it is currently with a regular set of events all the time. Um, you know, things like really showing off the roof garden and um, the art gallery and obviously all the other floors and attracting new antique dealers. I would like to see Jacobs as almost a, a chapter art centre of the city centre and just something different. Few would dispute that Jacobs offers something very different. But what if the forces of change made another attempt to claim it? I think if Jacobs were to be bought out or changed from its current vision, it would just be a travesty for the area. Uh, I suppose Jacobs has become a physical home and a spiritual home because I've been here so long. Fortunately, we are attached to a Georgian house and that has saved us over the years. Whether it will continue to save us as a building in the centre of town remains to be seen. If something happened with Jacobs or we had to leave this location, I wouldn't be happy been a part of my life, a big part of my life, for a long, long time. If Jacobs had to be knocked down and redeveloped as an office space or whatever they plan to do, it would be devastating, not only for me, but for the people of Cardiff. In this area, this is the only building that tells people that we have a past. Well, I think Jacobs is a fantastic um, place. It's unique in Cardiff, there's nothing else really like it. If it should close, I think that would be terrible. Lots of the historic places of Cardiff have already been knocked down, they're, they're no longer. And this has survived in amongst all these office blocks and I think it's truly a gem.